How's it going everyone? Maryland here, and I'm going to be doing something a little different. So, Team17, publisher of quite a few different games, reached out to me about a game called Monster Sanctuary, and offered me an early access key for it. The game can be described as Metroidvania meets Pokemon, although don't worry, I'll jump ahead and say it didn't feel like a mindless Pokemon knockoff. Not at all. So first of all, for those of you that don't know, what is a Metroidvania? It's a genre that usually describes 2D platformers, where you get different upgrades and return to older areas to unlock newer areas with your new upgrades. Games like Metroid, obviously. And then Blaster Master, modern Castlevania games, Ori and the Blind Forest, those are all examples of the genre. So let's take a look at Monster Sanctuary. So the game starts off showing you some lovely 2D pixel goodness of happy monsters frolicking about. The Monster Sanctuary is a land where monsters live, while the Monster Stronghold is a home for people, some of which are monster keepers, which raise different monsters. You'll be given a choice of four different spectral familiars, the equivalent of starter Pokemon, that you'll begin your journey with. Whichever of the four you pick represents the bloodline of your character, and your familiar has been with your family's bloodline for generations. There are three other characters with prestigious bloodlines as well. Now, the four familiars have different abilities, stats, weaknesses, resistances, and playstyles. I picked the Spectral Eagle because it looked pretty well-rounded, and I have to say it was pretty good to use throughout pretty much all the game. The other three also look like good choices as well, with the Spectral Wolf having good defenses, party-wide crit buffing, and built-in healing with lifesteal. The Spectral Toad focuses more on support and luring the foes to target it with taunt, also poisoning foes for some extra damage, and the Spectral Lion gets good regeneration support for the whole party, keeping them healed while doing burning effects and stuff on uh, the foes for some extra damage over time. So after a little bit more introduction to the world, the gameplay begins, and you're thrown right into the action, getting into a tutorial battle within minutes of starting the game. Building up your team is different from games like Pokemon or Dragon Quest Monsters, you have no way of directly catching any monster you fight, but instead you have a chance of receiving a monster egg after beating a fight. There's a battle score system that was kind of reminiscent of Tales of Symphonia, or any of the Tales of games, where you receive a rank based on how well you did in battle. By winning the fight quickly, by taking no damage, and by stacking a lot of buffs, as well as afflicting the, 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 the foes with status conditions like poison, you can increase your score, and the higher your score, the better chances of getting rare items. Thankfully, even if you aren't perfect in fights, you should amass a pretty good selection of eggs, which you can hatch from your inventory after getting them to add that monster to your team. So teams consist of three monsters in your battle party, three monsters in your backup party, and then any beyond that are tucked away somewhere, although they can be swapped into the party pretty much whenever. Now, I couldn't find any way to switch between the three active monsters and any of the backup monsters in battle, so make sure your active team is the team of three that you want to use in the fights. You want to make sure that they're capable, although the backup ones will thankfully still gain the full amount of experience after winning each fight. So it's a good way to train up new monsters you might have your eye on. The backup monsters are also used in keeper battles, where you get to fight against other human characters that are also training monsters. I'll get to that later though, as it's not something that happens until quite a bit later in the game, and it can be kind of tricky, you're not gonna lie. So jumping around and exploring the world felt fun. There's a map in the top right of the screen, so you have a general idea of where you are and where you still need to explore, plus you can access the map from the menu. It's very much like Metroid in that regard. That's saying something because I actually haven't played Metroid, but I know what the map looks like. So your monsters have different abilities that they can use outside of battle to help you solve puzzles or access optional areas or things like that. They felt pretty natural. Didn't feel like it was a one-to-one, -one, this puzzle needs this monster type of situation. There were several instances where similar monsters could accomplish the same task. And there were a lot of instances of monsters having the same overworld ability entire to, entirely, like flying. So that was fine in my opinion, and not having to have a specific monster was rather nice. It also gives some good incentive to backtrack to earlier areas after obtaining new monsters so you could go back and see if there's any new items there. 
Now, while on the overworld, you can run into groups of enemies. Early on, it'll just be one or two, but after you've got at least three in your party, every group consists of three enemies, meaning most fights will be a three-on-three -three brawl. Battles in the game take some finesse. All of your monsters start with their base amount of mana, and then each of their special attacks costs a certain amount of mana to use. At the start of each turn, after the first, each of your monsters regain an amount of mana equal to their mana regeneration attribute which is influenced by their max mana and any other items they have equipped. This dynamic means you can't just keep using your powerful move over and over again, but at the same time it also felt generous enough that I could still do pretty much what I wanted to, although I did invest some equipment and abilities into mana regeneration, which definitely helped with that. You have to be mindful of weaknesses and resistances. Thankfully, the battle interface shows a red up arrow when you're attacking with a weakness, and a shield if the enemy resists whatever type attack you're using. The interface also does a good job at estimating how much damage you'll do with any attack, although it doesn't factor in critical hits or misses, so sometimes you can do a bit more or a bit less than you were expecting. Now, both teams of monsters, yours and your opponents, each take their turns, giving all monsters a chance to take an action before the opponent has a chance to. Every hit any of your monsters inflicts builds up a combo meter for that turn, and a lot of skills hit multiple times. Your attacks will be doing increased damage based on how high the combo meter is. You're best off using any buffing, shielding, or healing skills for the first action, as these build up the combo meter, then using moves that hit more times than the others, and finally using the final action to do the most damage. It's not strictly necessary to do this, and you'll have to adapt your plans to react to the enemy's moves and debuffs, but it's still a great way to squeeze out some extra damage. Speaking of buffs and debuffs, these are really important in Monster Sanctuary. Thankfully, virtually every monster has multiple skills that can buff your party or debuff the foe. Most debuffs are slapped onto damaging moves, so you'll still be doing some damage while crippling the foe. I really like that. Buffs usually affect the entire party, too, with higher level buffs adding secondary effects, although there are a few single target buffs that inflict three buffs at once. The constant buffing and debuffing reminded me a lot of the Persona or Shin Megami Tensei games, although the effect of the buffs and debuffs is usually closer to 20 to 25%, so it adds up over time, but it's not like it's doubling your damage right from the get-go. In order to get all these skills, you've got to level up your monsters, which you can do by battling other monsters. It's an RPG, that shouldn't be surprising. The game uses a skill point system where every level your monster gains, it gains a skill point which can be used to unlock any skill that you have the level and prerequisites for. Skills can be active, such as ones that you use in battle, um, for attacking, for healing, for buffing, stuff like that. Skills can be passive, which provide a constant benefit solely for that monster. And lastly, some passive skills can also have an aura effect, meaning they provide an effect for the entire party, not just that one monster. There are also several different uh, trees of skills for each monster, usually three or four different like branched trees and stuff. So each of those have more skills as you progress through this, the tree. And after hitting level 10, you'll unlock even more skills in each of those trees as you can upgrade them to even stronger versions. Very nice. Now, even after getting stronger skills, you can still use lower level ones in battle if you don't have enough mana for the stronger ones or if you'd rather just conserve your mana. There are also items that you can buy for 500 gold, 500 G, which isn't really that expensive except like way early on in the game. And that'll reset your entire skill tree, refund all your skill points and basically let you start over. You can try again if, you know, you have this really good idea or you want to try something else out for a specific monster, you don't have to be locked into it forever, which I think is really nice. So some passive skills add stat points to the monster as well. Stats are pretty simple in this game, with each monster having a base rating from between 1 and 10 for the five different stats. Attack, Magic, Defense, Health, and Mana. Attack determines how much physical damage your skills do. Magic determines how much magic magical damage they do, and you can see the power listed in each skill. So something that does 4 times 40% will show a total of 160% as well, but that means it would do 4 
hits of your attack stat or your magic stat at 40% power. So for instance, if you had an attack stat of 100, each hit would hit 440 damage. Defense reduces the amount of damage taken from either physical or magical attacks, so it's a very helpful stat. Health is the monster's HP, while mana is the equivalent of its MP and also determines how much it regenerates each turn. There's also crit chance and crit damage, which start at 10% for critical hit chances. So every single attack that monster has will have a 10% chance of inflicting a critical hit. And the critical hit damage amount is also defaulted to 50%, but there are ways you can raise that. So that'll be very helpful for your damage dealers later on in the game to raise your critical hit chance and your critical hit damage. Now, in order to boost these stats even further, you can equip each of your monsters with a weapon and up to three different accessories. Some weapons raise just attack or just magic, while several raise both evenly. Weapons and accessories also raise other stats by a worthwhile amount, so equipping good weapons and accessories is very important. You won't have much control over what you get and use earlier on in the game, but after you've reached the Keeper's Stronghold, you can buy weapons, accessories, and you can also forge them with the various materials you've gathered in battles to improve their performance even more. You can also feed your monsters different kinds of food to raise their stats even further. Although it's a bit of a different system, each monster receives the benefit of the last three food items it has eaten, and food items don't directly raise attacking stats aside from critical hit damage. So it's mostly about giving it extra health, defense, or mana. They're definitely worth eating, and the effects are essentially permanent, lasting until they're replaced by other food items. Be nice to see some more food, as there were only eight items I found playing through the beta. Two tiers of four stat raising items. Having some items that added other effects, like an elemental boost of 5%, or some that, you know, affected the damage of weakness and resistance, or other stuff like that, that would have been neat. I still like the system overall, though. There's a lot more to Monster Sanctuary than just that. Like, that's basically the basics of the game, but it plays more or less like that. Kind of what you see there is a good impression of what to expect from it. It's simple, but it's also pretty in-depth at the same time. Like, I like it. I think it was actually really well thought out. So, let me go over a few of the bullet points. The things that I liked, and then the things that I didn't like. So, graphics. Let's talk about graphics. I liked them. I think they look great. They, they had that retro feel. I felt like they had a lot of character to them. The monsters, they all looked really cool. They weren't all like super mean and tough, but they weren't also like super duper cutesy. I think it was a really good balance. The Cat Zerker, love the Cat Zerker. That thing was an absolute unit. Like seriously, I can't recommend getting that early on and using it. Like it's not as great early on, but after you start getting a lot of like critical hit chance buffs and critical damage buffs, that thing becomes really, really good, and regeneration on it is also very nice for boss fights. Another thing that was very handy was the magma pillar, I think it was. The little caterpillar magma thing. Shield. Really, it's shield that's super useful in this game, because you set up shields, and then you just don't take damage from attacks. It damages the shield instead, and it sets it up on the whole party, meaning you don't have to heal as often, so... Early on, I used the blob for healing, but then I realized, wow, shield is good. So the shield and cat zerker, I definitely recommend whatever your shield monster ends up being. Like, it's just a really good combo. The platforming, that's something else that I really liked about the game. I like the fact that it it came across as very natural. Like, it felt like a Metroidvania when I was just exploring the overworld. Not super in-depth, because, you know, you weren't, like, shooting at enemies or slashing them or stuff like that. But it, as far as, like, actually maneuvering the world, I I liked that. I thought it was really good. And then it switched, just like that, into RPG mode whenever you got into a battle. And it felt like a really solid RPG. I, I really felt like it was more solid of an RPG than a Metroidvania, just because with the Metroidvania element... You know, so much of that is like fighting the enemies with your different weapon upgrades or whatever, and you didn't really do that in Monster Sanctuary. You instead fought them in turn-based battles. 
Not to say I thought it was bad, but I really enjoyed the RPG element. I thought that was really good. Uh, battle system. Speaking of that, honestly, I was really impressed. I felt it was very well balanced. Like, with everything going on, with all the monsters, it wasn't like there was just a clear standout that this was a really, really good monster and everything else is just really bad. It, it honestly felt like all of the monsters were well thought out. I felt like they were balanced, more or less. I felt like there was a lot of different strategies you could give each monster. I, I like that a lot, and just the overall battle system I thought was was really good. Like the buffs, the debuffs, the shields, healing, the combo meter, like all these things are things you have to be mindful of. And they did make the fights rather interesting. Another thing I really liked, every monster gets fully healed after the fight. And the whole six monster party, they get all the experience. So you can train up new things without having to use them. That's cool. But also, you don't really have to worry about consuming your resources in battle. You know, you can just do what it takes to get the fight done. You get it done and then you can just move on. It's not like, oh, I'm really deep into this dungeon or this this area and I'm running out of my MP or whatever, which is very common in RPGs. No, because your MP starts at a fixed amount in each fight and you regenerate it just in that fight. That solves so many problems. I really like that. The skill system. I thought the skill system was actually really pretty good. Like it's not anything super new, but I felt like it was implemented very well. I think that it allowed for a lot of good customization. I think it was pretty darn in depth. I think it gave different monsters different kind of strategies you could go for and you had to kind of pick which one but at the same time it didn't feel like you were too limited like you didn't get a chance to try out a lot of stuff i felt like they kept just enough from me while letting me do most of what i wanted but still letting me kind of want more i guess which i think was really nice i, I think it was well done the only thing i would kind of suggest to you is wait if you're playing it don't just give your skills as soon as you get them, especially once you start reaching like level 7, 8, and 9, because once you get to level 10, you unlock like really good skills, so then you'll have skill points for them. And because all the skills cost just one skill point, at least as of this build, you know, it really that's pretty nice to just hold off if you don't see any skills that are like really worth it. Like definitely take a time or take a moment just to look at all of your monster's skills when you get a new monster and kind of think what you want to do, especially after you start getting to like level 8, 9, and then 10. So I like the skill system. I think it was neat. Champion mobs, the boss battles. They were a good challenge. Like pretty much every single one of them, except for one, was pretty challenging. Like I felt like it was well balanced. I felt like it... They had some interesting strategy to it. The fact that they could attack multiple times per turn made up for the fact that, you know, it's a three on one. They had a lot of health and stuff, which was good. Definitely different strategies. I mean, it was, it was good. I like that. Um, and the one that I found was easy. It just I had a really good setup for it. So, you know, maybe I just got lucky. But overall, I was impressed with it. I think they were pretty good challenges. Pretty fun. Now the monster tamer battles, these are kind of like your trainer battle things, or monster keeper battles, I think they are. Um, they were tough. They were arguably a little too tough, I felt. Like the first one, oh man, that one was really rough. I, what I noticed with it is, I feel like they're trying to balance it for PvP. And this is kind of like a taste of what it's like. The problem is, they go to town with the buffs, like, right from the first of these battles you have to fight, and, you know, you're not really used to it on that level, and you just have all this stuff, like, I narrowly got through the first one on the first try, but I could definitely see that being a bit challenging for a lot of people. I like the challenge, I think that was good, I think that having some of those in the game is nice, but part of me also thinks it might have been a little harsh. But that also does give me a lot of, you know, potential or give me a lot of hope for, for PvP. I don't think it's going to be like top tier, everyone's going to be doing this, but at the same time, 
I felt like the system was balanced enough that it could actually lend itself for some interesting PvP fights. Like, I could see that, and I admire the fact that they were definitely considering that. And, uh, plot characters, they weren't great, they weren't bad, but what I, what I liked is it, it felt different. It didn't just feel like very generic. It, it didn't really waste your time with a lot of stuff. Like the plot and characters were arguably kind of minimal. There was a lot of gameplay, which I think is really, really the motivating factor. Like the gameplay was solid in this and it didn't just make you go through walls of text, but it also wasn't like, you know, revolutionary, let's say. But at the same time, like the, the point I'm trying to, to make is it wasn't bad. And I think so often with games like this, they are executed rather poorly, especially when it comes to blind characters. And, you know, they try to get like really ambitious. It didn't feel too forced. It felt interesting enough to kind of make me wonder, huh, I wonder what that's all about. It didn't, you know, just like stick. It wasn't like some huge twists or anything, but it was I liked it, so I guess that's that's a good thing. Now, for things I didn't like, all right, so towards the end of the game, even midway through the game, the battle system, it really gets rather slow. Now, when I say slow, I don't mean like laggy. I mean, it takes a long time to get through random fights because enemies start having, you know, over a thousand HP, you know, 1500, even like up to 2200 for random enemies towards the end of the game, and you don't really have any massive increases in damage done. Like, you have sizable increases, but I felt like it didn't quite... It wasn't quite lined up right. Like, I feel like this could be fixed if enemies towards the end just had less HP, you know, maybe like closer to a thousand or twelve hundred. It... it wasn't, like wasn't bad. I mean, it made every fight kind of a little strategic, but at the same time, there, there's like a lot of enemies and you just, you, know, you kind of want to get through them. So I felt like that could have used some improvement, especially because like I was using my cat Zerker with like mad crits and stuff, doing a lot of damage. I feel like if, if that would have been for, you know, if I didn't do that strategy, I don't know how much damage I would have been doing. And if it takes like if it takes 10 to 15 rounds to get through a fight, I feel like that's maybe a little excessive, so I don't know. Some of the puzzles! They were pretty hard for the point in the game they were in. Now, if I were to assume that would be maybe 30%, like, let's take the... Well, there's this one puzzle that involves a red, a blue, a green, and then this yellow switch, which is your goal. I would guess it's about... Well, I don't know. It was about 80% through the beta that I played. So I would guess maybe 30 to 40% through the game. I felt like it was really challenging. I liked the challenge, but I felt like it was too early in the game for something like that, you know? Uh, there, It's definitely great if it's for an optional thing, but it was like required to get through. Like there is this one puzzle, it wasn't even so much a puzzle, it was like one of those Ori in the Blind Forest jumps that you had to just, or like a VVV, VVV jump that you just had to like, hope you got it and it took so many tries to get it. There wasn't a problem if you didn't make it. There were a lot of spikes, but you just reset back to where you were and you could try it again. But it just, it took a lot of effort for it. I liked that. I thought that was cool and it was just for an optional item, but I felt like having a switch puzzle where you had to like pull all these levers and they unlock different beams and things, and when you have to like walk around to see what changed, I feel like that would have been a really good way late game puzzle, but if it's only going to be around maybe 30 to 40% through, maybe it's a little hard. I don't, I don't know. I got through it. It was fine, but yeah. So other things I didn't like, uh, no female main character option. Um, from what I read on the Kickstarter, it looks like it just barely missed the stretch goal. But for games like this with silent protagonists, I just don't really think that's okay nowadays. Hopefully they'll add that. I, I really hope that they will because I feel like that should just be a feature. Uh, because I, I think people would want to play as themselves and if you don't have the option to choose your, your gender, 
whether it's male, female, or, you know, maybe non-binary, for instance, like, if you can just add that, it, it goes a long way for making the game appeal to a wider audience, so hopefully they'll do that. Um, other minor thing, no character customization in at least this version, although it sounds like that will be something that will be added to early access, so that's good. That's good, but I didn't I didn't have that right now, so I would have loved to have dressed up my character in some flashy outfit or do cool things like that, or what would really be wild is if you could give, like, your monsters little <laughs> customizations. That'd be neat, but yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely a thing. Now, for bugs, did I run into any bugs in the game? Honestly, other than, like, the bug enemy, <laughs> not really. The only thing that I could think of that Maybe it was like a bug was just I used the the familiar eagle and it has like a fiery effect around it. And every now and then maybe I'd see some fire over on the uh, party screen where it didn't quite look like it needed to be. Not that it was an issue, but I was actually really impressed with how smooth it ran. Um, there was a little bit of slowdown at certain points, but for the most part, it ran nice and smooth. Might have also been because I was recording it. Could have been all sorts of things, but it, it wasn't like there were any major issues, which I was really impressed with. Like, it was a very solid experience, so definitely impressed. I have to say, like, would I recommend this game? Yeah, I actually would, and I mean that, like, fully. It's, it impressed me. I, like I said, I got an email. It had a key. It was early access. It was even earlier than, uh the public early access, so I was thinking, you know, I feel like I heard about it somewhere before, and it it sounded really neat, it looked neat from just the trailer, but then playing it, I, I found myself quite hooked, and it took me about nine hours to get through the current beta version. It's going to, the full version should be in 2020. You can get it early access on Steam starting, uh, let's see, August 28th. 2019. So that's really cool. It's right around the corner. You had a chance to see a little bit of it right now. Uh, I very well may be streaming the game too because I, I'd like to try it with different monsters and different strategies. I feel like there was a lot of other different tactical approaches I could have gone with and it's just it was fun. I could definitely see replaying it. So would I recommend it? Yeah, I would. I, I definitely would. It was a challenge. It was good, but I felt like it actually, it got things right. And that means a lot in today's environment. So often I feel like people or development teams, they just kind of like rush something out. And I feel like there was actually a lot of thought given to balancing different things and making each monster worthwhile. And that's really cool. Like. That's really cool. And also just the fact that it was, you know, a 2D game where you get into battles, like not a 2D game, but like a platformer, but you get into RPG battles. Like it's kind of like Paper Mario, but not because Paper Mario was still 3D, really. It was neat. I, I like that. So ultimately, would I recommend it? Yeah, I would. And I was surprised at how much I liked it, actually. Um, the, oh, one other thing I, I didn't quite like as much is just the music. It was, it was fitting, it was all right, but it, it was something that I felt like it could have been improved on. Like, there wasn't, there wasn't really anything that was super catchy. Like, it fit generally well, but I feel like that is something that, that could have been just a little, like having a catchier tune or something. I guess it does grow on you a little bit, but... I don't know, that, it was, it was alright. I, I wouldn't say I didn't like it, I just, I think it could have been better. But, yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching my coverage, my review, if you will, of Monster Sanctuary. Thank you so much again to Team17 for reaching out about this, uh, for giving me the opportunity to check it out early. Uh, definitely go check out the game, see the trailer for it if this hasn't sold you on it already, you can find links down below in the description. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, I hope if you want to see more of this you'll leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, if you want me to see some more, or if you want me to do some more so you can see it. And uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you're looking forward to Monster Sanctuary.